Well, hello there. It's uh, Beards and Bangers, and today you find me in a bit of a sweaty mess because, of course, we're still in the middle of this heat wave. But I am at a local car show, and I've just adjusted my camera very badly. There we are. I'm at a local car show. I'm about seven miles up the road from where I live. I'm at Cheersley for the classic and vintage fun day. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. So I've come in Bram. It's Bram's first uh, little trip out for a little while. Um, yeah, his battery's still got this drain, but he did start this morning because I've left the battery disconnected. Um, yeah, Bram, Bram is here and he's already getting uh, some admiring glances. Um, parked up next to this Volvo, hand-built Volvo limousine, um, which is really quite lovely. And behind that, we've got a, a Volvo 480 ES, and the, the, the sounds of this when it drove in this morning was absolutely lovely. But just look at this um, Volvo limo. Got a little uh, cocktail table in the middle, and uh, a telephone as well. And it's got the uh, sort of the dividing glass for privacy. So very interesting to see one of these. Uh, really gorgeous colour as well. Um, we've got an app, bevy of MX-5s here. I won't go round them everyone because we know what mx5s are like but good contingent of those seeing plenty of those at shows this year um another mx5 here but then next to it we've got a ford cortina or is it a console could be a console this one let's have a look at the have a look at the rear end it's always a yeah. always a good clue it is a cortina cortina 1600e Let's get the camera adjusted. We're a bit, bit on the wonk this morning, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that's lovely. We've seen so many court, lovely Cortinas this year. It's, it's really good. Um, a Hillman Avenger. Uh, well, it's got Chrysler on the uh, front. What is this gimbal doing? There we are. That's better. Hillman Avenger. We've got a BMW. And I think this is a 2002. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It's in, in fact, it's very likely that I am wrong. No, it, is a, it is a 2002 TII. So, of course, this was the car that Triumph developed the Dolomite Sprint for to uh, to um, compete. Have a look at the engine bay. It's uh, yeah. So this is a, a you know quite an early injection car, mass-produced injection car. Um, very compact, very tight for space in the engine bay. So a bit more akin. To modern cars. Um, over here we've got a very nice gold 75 Tourer. Um, haven't seen the owner of this car so I've not had a chance to have a chat to them. Um, but yeah it's interesting the, 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 the actual gold is quite you know it's quite quite a lot deeper in colour than the, the white gold like my 75 which you're going to see a lot more of on the channel in the coming weeks because it's now had the mechanical bits that needed doing done uh, we've got a couple of scoobies and then this interesting citroen i don't know what what it's called uh, but it's amy an amy a citroen ami so i've used the name of a previous citroen from the 60s and 70s it's quite a popular site in europe yeah yeah i can imagine Madrid's got loads of them going around where the I'm, traffic's terrible. I'm guessing this is electric. Yes, it's yeah. Yeah. electric. Yeah. I think the doors they go both ways. Or, okay. You know, they're, 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 I've read up about them. Interest, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Citroen always make interesting, yeah. unusual cars. Um, and this, this, is, this is not a classic. The back and the front are supposed to be the same. Is it like a, is it a palindromic yeah, design? It's, yeah. It's exactly the same. So it's completely so from this point here. Yes. I'm videoing, by the way. So, oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but carry on talking because it's interesting to hear your thoughts. Um, so, for, this is the centre point. So, it's it's a symmetrical car. Does the does the other side open? The other way. The other way. So that comes. Ah, the so the doors actually open. They're contra opening doors, which is interesting, confusing. One lady just said. <laughs> yeah, this this I've already we've only been we've only been here like an hour and. Um, this car is definitely polarising opinion, I think it's fair to say. Um, Porsche of some description next to that. Now next to the next to the limo, the Volvo limo, is this rather nice 
Rover 216 GTI. So it's got the, this is James, who's a friend of the channel, friend of mine, friend of Adrian's as well. So it's a very small world, the Rover, the Rover, uh, the Rover community. Um, this is the twin cam Honda D series engine powered. Uh, so you know, really quite a, quite a powerful car. Um, this one's in white gold. It's got the lovely, the GTI seats. Um, yeah, James got a little bit of a fleet of, so you may have seen James's other car, the Morris 1800 in my Cowley video and possibly my Hook Norton video as well. But yeah, James has come in this this morning and then we've got this lovely, and I do like this. I used to have a 9.3 soft turbo. And this is a 900. I don't know if it's got the soft or the hard turbo. Maybe you'll, is it soft or hard turbo this one? high pressure high pressure it's got the this one's got a bit more grunt but just look Saabs are just it's criminal they don't the Saabs aren't made anymore because they were just su they're such good cars um, very friendly communities well I remember when I had my 9.3 any other side driver would flash it was like an automatic automatic thing because of course at one point Saabs were a very very rare site on British roads but this is lovely um, and very appropriate for this weather now, if we have a little skip over here, just had an announcement that the um, the Battle of Britain Memorial flight won't be coming over, which is disappointing because we all love the sound of Merlin engines. Um, now here we've got a lineup of minis. We've got a real, real nice variety. Um, we've got some, some we've got a early 80s standard mini there, probably a very early injection. <clears throat> version there may could still be carburetor actually h reg um gimbal is not happy today i think it's the hot weather now this interest this is a this is a late 80s um mini but it's been dressed to partially sort of look cooper-esque um but also partially kind of mark one mini and i just felt a spot of rain which is absolutely glorious because it is so bloody humid today um this actually is a cooper um press and that is just stunning I, I adore these cars um, if I ever come into ridiculous amounts of money I will get one we can we can just about get the camera in there to have a look um, it's all this is set up for rally so it's got all the dials all the all the uh, all the little bells and whistles it's got a got a sort of a, a card holder as well for your route so um, yeah roll cage and Sparco sports seats that is that really is quite a splendid thing and the gimbal is I don't know if it's running out of battery let's have a my gimbal could be running out of battery so we might have to go freestyle in a minute um, got a, 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 a later mini here but it's sort of dressed to look 1960s it's got a lovely Webasto sunroof okay, momentary pause for the announcement um, yes yeah, so we've got sort of a Cooper styled version. Now, this this lovely this is lovely colour for the magenta uh, magenta uh, mini. This would be a probably a single point injection one, given that reg, um, and then something much more. So I'm just told, this is the last of the carburettor. So M reg was like mid 90s, and that's the last of the carburettor minis. I've just been told. So correction there, viewers, um, and then uh, got something coop coopery. Uh, another another sort of early 90s late 80s one there and then this one looks a bit bit uh, bit bit worn but it's nice to see cars like this at these shows because cars are supposed to be used and a bit of rust is actually all right and, uh, rust is lighter than metal let's not forget um, now as you know i've got a secret passion for bmws so there's a few uh few lined up here this lovely um alpina just looks absolutely gorgeous. Let's have a little peek inside this one. That is, that is a thing of beauty. Look at those seats. Just, let's see if the gimbal behaves itself. Absolute joy, that thing. And we've got a Bauer E30 Bauer convertible. We'll have to seen back out next to it and that's fair I've seen this I've seen this before I think I've seen this at the Chilton Hills rally so that's a, another local car mark one um, golf cabrio that's very nice and we've got a couple of beetle I think we've got more beetles than this we have we got so we got this is like the Volkswagen section now so we've got a few beetles uh, 
and then something iconic mark ii gti um these just these still look good i always say that you know rover rover products from the sort of late 90s early 2000s still look fresh these these do still look fresh but at the same time very very classic and that is lovely and then we've got some more beetleage here now you know me with car shows i don't go around every car which is why i'm not stopping at every single beetle um, we've got some porsches lined up down here of varying ages and specifications and sizes so we've got something fairly modern there with something very very classic next to it and that is that is that is beautiful that's what a porsche is to me classic 911 as well next to it which is beautiful um and we've got a later 911 and then this is a nine it's a 924 928 944 something like that I get a bit confused with these this is a 944 so i quite like these i think they're nice nice looking car quite chunky and uh, aggressive looking and bear in mind we're still in the first field so there's there's um there's a the, the main area we haven't actually got to yet um that's rather nice that audi quattro this is very much like the one that was in the, uh, the television series life on mars and ashes, ashes to ashes ladies and gentlemen just to tell you that i'm still uh, having my possession and i Next to the next to the uh, Quattro, we've got this Mercedes SLK. Now these these are definitely classics now, I would say, because they're, they're you know they're, they're quite affordable. Um, if they work, I suspect this one doesn't do much work. It looks absolutely immaculate. Um, but they are uh, not the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. So another aircraft, um, yeah, and we've got a bit of a German mix here. So I think that's that's a nine nine two eight or nine. To um, four, that's quite nice. One of the big Mercedes convertibles, which we do like. Another Porsche Mercedes. There, we'll just have a we'll just quickly skip past these Beetles. Had a look at a Beetle already. That colour's lovely. That's really quite nice. Um, another Merc convertible. These are these are beautiful cars. It's a 280 SL. transporters and various other bits a couple more golfs and then we've got an mg bgt v8 just tucked in here look at that lovely rover v8 buick v8 call it what you will iconic engine feel the heat coming off it hopefully they haven't had vaporization getting up here <laughs> Beautiful colour. Damask red? Yeah, damask red. Blimey, I've got a colour right for once. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen a lot of these this year because, of course, it is the uh, the 100th birthday of NG. Um, yeah, and it's nice to see one at our local, one of our local shows. There's a stag just turning up, which is nice. Another, another V8-powered car. I don't know if it's got the original Triumph V8 engine or the... They, they've chucked the Rover V8 engine in, which is quite a common thing to do. Hard to tell from the uh, the engine note. Um, lovely little Lotus Elan next to it. Um, a few more to look at in this, this area, and then we'll we'll get into the the main event. And look at this MGA in old and white on the end here. That is absolutely gorgeous. That is glorious. And is producing in a terrifically that is absolutely terrific glorious. Way, very sustainable Again, we've seen uh, lots of MGs this year, and, uh, and uh, we're very proud this of is a an absolutely our beautiful our example, really is. So, so where is Cheersley? Cheersley is roughly located between Tame and Aylesbury. Now, this show is actually at the Cheersley Cricket Club. So the out we're on the outfield, and the. Uh, the surface here for a car show is absolutely lovely because it's really well manicured grass so it's quite luxurious walking around walking around here rather than a, a rough kind of planings uh, car park which we find ourselves in quite frequently but just look at the 
look at the selection of vehicles here. So we've got this red London bus, traditional London bus, next to this American military truck, um, complete with a, what's that, a 20 cal machine gun on top there. Um, next to a, a classic Range Rover, next to a, a Rolls Royce, uh, Silver Ghost, is it, maybe? Dunno, uh, not, not, not that good on Rolls Royces. And then we've got this, uh, I think it's a standard. No, it's a Morris, it's a Morris quarter ton van. That is a Morris quarter ton van. So we've got an absolute variety of things here. I've seen this before. Yeah. I've yeah, seen. I saw you at Cowley. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're going to be on YouTube again. <laughs> I love this yeah, van. Yeah. yeah. It's quarter a ton. It's a, it's a quarter ton, isn't it? No, no. It's um, it's a Morris Oxford 1957 flatbed, and it was made like this. I remember you telling me now. Do you remember that? Yeah. I do. So yes, I've got it completely. It's not a quarter ton van. It's I, I probably. I'm probably yeah, completely forgiven for calling it that, yeah. but it's it's a Morris Oxford purpose-built flatbed. It's not conversion. This is how it was built, and I should have remembered that from when I saw this <laughs> this lovely vehicle and its lovely owner at Cowley a few months ago. But uh, I've been to a few car shows since then. Yeah, I'll bet. thanks for the information. Okay. Um, so yeah, but, yeah, that's that's real variety, isn't it? You know, classic 50s, 60s British stuff. British vintage stuff, modern classic, American military, and a, a London bus. Fantastic. More, we've got quite a bit bevy of uh, military vehicles here. So we've got American Jeep style thing next to a, 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 a Land Rover. Uh, that's a proper Willys Jeep there. Um, lovely sea of khaki and green. Oh, that one just made a noise. No, Johnny bought it. Johnny and Reggie Ray bought it. Loads of military style cars. I've just spotted some Ford Escort that I'm going to wander over to in a minute because I do like those. Um, now, this is quite something. This is a, a Celica liftback. So, what younger viewers might um, think of as Celica. This, this is the original one. Just look at the uh, look at the styling of that. That is absolutely glorious. And the colour is just uh, superb. Um, Aston Martin next to it. But that sounds lovely. And then we've got a Scimitar uh, convertible, which is interesting. Ford Anglia. We know what that is. Don't need to don't need to point out the old English white miner too much because we know we know we know the Morris miners. It's so yeah, always a good turnout to Land Rovers around here because we are in a fairly rural area. Um, so that's a lovely Jaguar. And then we've got this Jaguar uh, XK120. I think this one is. And that's very attractive. Interesting with the black the black bon bonnet. Is it got a vinyl? Some kind of vinyl? No, it's painted. Not a vinyl coating. Um, now this is very interesting. This looks like an Austin 7 and it is the nippy so it's got the sort of lighter weight body on top of the chassis. Um, yeah, they're just so small, so lovely. Uh, do like an Austin 7. Uh, Cobra Generation 2 next to, this looks very interesting. Jaguar three and a half litre. That is a very, I think it's fair to say, sexy car. Um, speaking of sexy cars, the Rover P5B Coupe has just come in, but that's just that's now driving off over there. So maybe they're being sent to the uh, sort of British, British classics area where I'm parked at. Um, oh, I must apologise for the gimbal today. It's uh, it's not it's not happy at all. Um, Lovely e type I'm, I'm deliberately wandering down here because there's something that regular viewers. Oh, that's lovely, that Jaguar. It's not a Jaguar, it's a Daimler. It's a Daimler, I think. It is, but well, that's beautiful. Another Aston. Another Aston, but look, look what we found. We have found a Rover 25 in a. Uh, now I, just, I thought I'd learn moon. I think this is Moonstone, Moonstone Green. Let's have a little peek at it. I don't know this car. I don't know if it's local or not. Um, but it is lovely to see these at shows because you know, they're probably the least. I don't know, 
least generally appreciated. Obviously, a lot of my viewers do appreciate them because that's why we do what we do. But yeah, that's really nice to see that. And that's, that's looking pretty tidy, I have to say. Um, 25 next to a, an XJS. Which is always marvel at the bonnets of those. Just, the bonnet just, just goes on for miles like a football pitch. Um, and we've got a re another Reliant. Uh, these Coupe, I can't what they're called. It's a Simit, yeah, it's an early, earlier Scimitar. Now we've got this MGF, I want to say next to it and I, I, I did meet the chap who owns oh no this isn't it this is a TF so it's not the car I thought it was um, yeah that's rather nice in a royal blue uh, we will go behind because we've got a a rover we've got a P6 three and a half thousand S in harvest gold and it just looks absolutely lovely that's beautiful I've done away with the gimbal because it's just annoying me now. But yeah, lovely three and a half thousand S. Um, then next to that, we've got an Esprit, Lotus Esprit, which is glorious. Look at those Webbers on top of the engine. There. That's going to stay. Oh, the Delorto. I do apologise. Delorto carbs. That will. That, this will make this sound pretty special. <laughs> Very nice. Got a Vauxhall Cresta next to it. I just love the American kind of styling on these but uh yeah don't see many of these around now really really lovely in two two-tone blue as well so it's beautiful looking car uh we've seen that Salika. hello james Hi, Rob. hello uh another big cat i guess next k120 again and then a another mini and then look at this 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 appeals to me really really nice white 635 CSI I did think that's what it was but I just wanted to check the back first and I've just realized I'm actually using my wet GoPro the stuff I use for getting wet um, which is why this one's not quite so good it gets to get runs a bit hot this one um, so maybe that's why the uh, the gimbal was misbehaving because there's too much heat coming out of the camera I don't know if such things affect it um, Nice S-type Jag there, and then we've got a Chevy, and a Chevy pickup truck. And I want to I'll just glance at the American cars there, won't go around them in massive detail. We've got a lineup of uh, Escorts, which I, I do like, because I used to own an Escort, a 1990 Escort XR3i in white. I used to have, um, so I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. Um, We've got, yeah, Mark 2s, Mark 1s, and then there's the Mark 4s and the Mark 5 as well. Lovely colour, that Mark 2. It's beautiful. Very nice last model Granada here. I, so not last model, second last, wasn't it, this model? Very attractive. Yeah, always nice to see lots of Fords here. more Fords over here We've got very nice um, Cortina with some pretty chunky old chunky old wheels on that with a an RS Escort um, Mark 2 there another Mark 2 there very nice so we, we shan't go mad because we'll uh, will be too long. Cop Hill Climb next Sunday, I'll be at that. So look out for a video on that in about a week's time. That's a very nice BMW over there. Uh, Lotus and the Healy, uh, 3000 Mark II. There we are, that's what, that's what you can do with a, a C-Series engine. And the Mustang, I saw this this morning actually, at the bottom of my road, so a, there are a few Mustangs here, um, which is nice. And what it is always nice to see is uh, some Sierras. Um, generally, see lots of Cosworths, but it was uh, yeah, it's nice to see just an ordinary Sierra now and again. Yeah, this is this is definitely the Ford section here. So we've got some more Mustangs over here. 
nice uh, Fo Mark One Focus RS, which is, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be very valuable cars. They, I mean, they're already appreciated, um, but I think they're going to start appreciating very soon. Vauxhall yeah. there. Yeah, we've got plenty of Mustangs and other American stuff, which I shan't dwell on because it's not my, not my area of expertise whatsoever. Another Healy. So now it's just, it's just love that really narrow engine bay. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Austin Healy. That's interesting. Ford, possibly a V8. Um, oh no, Volvo 122. That's lovely. That's very, 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 very attractive indeed. So one nice triumph. I think we heard that's coming in a little bit earlier on. Um, now this is interesting. It's got a Ford engine. I don't think it's a. I think this is a. Yes, yeah, so it's a Reliant Scimitar convertible, but with a a Ford engine. Um, yeah, and that's really quite attractive. Very nice TVR next to it. And then one of my favourite cars, an MGB. And it's definitely an MGB, not going to make a mistake, because I now make sure I look at the bonnets before some of you tell me off. Uh, Hillman Minx, I think that is, which is very nice. Um, now, that's interesting, Datsun. So, early, early Datsun, you can, this is a 240Z. And again, it can't quite get side onto it far enough away, but very, very attractive styling again. Um, is there something I can help? Which is great. Another B, quite an early one. That looks very much like another TVR. That is. Look at that. Uh, look at that exhaust. That is. That is a work of art. That. And there's two great big fans. Which you'll need to keep that cool. Sorry. It's a Griffith, yeah, I thought it was. Very, very cramped inside, but it's all part of the fun. Uh, nice, very nice midget, round wheel arch, my favourite. Next to a Sprite, so the forerunner of the midget, a frog eye Sprite. And these are, they're good looking cars, aren't they? They're, they're real fun little things. Just come back to the uh, cars change GoPros um, and it seems to be behaving itself a bit better. A couple of cars turned up since um, since I was last here. So there was a, there was actually a very nice stag here a moment ago, but it's gone. I didn't stay here very long. Uh, very nice TVR. And then one of my favouritest ever cars, the Triumph CR6. I just absolutely adore these. Uh, shame I can't afford one because they are mega bucks now. Nice uh, camper, VW camper next to it, and this, this Mark 1 Golf. Uh, I saw that coming in a minute ago, and that's uh, very nice. Interesting there, another Mini turned up as well, which is good. Let's, uh, let's head back to where we, head back to where we were in a second ago. So yeah, very nice. Uh, MGT there. I'm not quite sure which one it is. I shan't interrupt the gentleman because you know, he's concentrating on something. Um, <coughs> possibly a TF. Um, another TR6 and a very nice Lotus um, Exige. Uh, with a Supra. Supra, superimposed in this area. Another, another Supra, so a couple of those together. Different marks. I do like the, the red one, the uh, that shape, I think that was particularly appealing to me. Um, Triumph TR7 in, I think, Nautilus blue, perhaps? Cavalry. Cavalry blue. There we are, I'm rubbish with colours. So very nice cavalry blue TR7 with its tartan seats. We shan't interrupt these people's lunch and go trampling through there. And then a, an early Spitfire, which is very nice. And a Wolseley 444. Uh, 444 and that's very nice very very nice car indeed and I think the police used a lot of these um, 
some kind of Renault here. I think this is a yes, yeah, 16 Renault 16 next to a Triumph front wheel drive. It's a Toledo that one, uh, and we saw this Volvo. Certainly, something like it. We we did we we got this far, so we can we can now move into the next section. I want to show you this MGF uh, that belongs to a guy called Ash, who's Aylesbury based as well. Uh, it's, it's a slightly interesting model, it has to be said. So we'll just scoot as quickly as a fat man on a hot day can scoot to have a look. Uh, well, that's some kind of kit car, I think. Yeah, but this is Ash's um, MGF and it's got a couple of bits that are very interesting so it's obviously a very attractive specimen it's got it's wearing um, TF160 wheels they're slightly later wheels they do they do look nice um, it's got this luggage rack with the uh, with the suitcase kind of mounted on it and that's actually a BMW accessory from the Z3 so one of the one of the things that BMW did during their MG Rover ownership was to provide little details like that. And that's really nice. Now some of these come with a BM, I'm told a BMW badge, and very rare that you do get them with MG badges on. So that's a that's an interesting detail. Um, the other interesting, I'm pretty sure this is unlocked. We're not going to get the alarm going off. Um, the other interesting thing with Ash's F. This lovely chrome um, cigarette lighter, but it's got, if you look in the, the middle at the buttons, it's got heated seats of something. And just chatting to him, we can't work out what it was from. So if anyone knows where these heated seats would have come from, what other model, A, those switches, they're certainly not from a 75, because they were a, an oval shaped switch, but did the, did the 25 or the ZR, uh, which wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been around when this was built, but would, would the, 20, the 225 have had heated seats if they were in top spec? If anyone knows, please drop a comment, because we'd love to know. Look at that lovely radio as well, proper MG CD, uh, CD radio as well. But yeah, lovely, lovely car. It's got the, the uh, dimpled uh, black leather seats. Uh, it's a very, very nice example. I do, I do now recognise this car, because I have seen it about in Aylesbury. And it's uh, sitting next to a very nice MGB GT. Um, opposite here, we've got another, another Tinker Taylor uh, reference now for those John Le Carre fans. This is, this is an Alvis Doctor's Coupe uh, from the 1930s. And uh, those who remember the, the novel Tinker Taylor, <laughs> Soldier Spy, will know that Jim Prido was given an Alvis, Alvis to keep quiet and he was adamant that it was the finest car in Britain until it was destroyed by socialism. So there we are. Um, this is a, a Humber, uh, and that's, that's very old. It's 1920, 1924, so that is a, that's a proper vintage car. And we've got this Riley coupe next to it, along with this uh, rather interesting pickup truck. So we've got a real nice bevy of British cars along here. So these stags in this yellow are one of my favourites. Um, it's very nice. Another round wheel arch midget, um, and this this um, this red is is particularly attractive. A Triumph TR. I'm not quite sure which one it is. Um, no clues. Just look how uh, Spartan that is, but how how sporting as well. Another TR next to it, uh, and an AC Ace, which is uh, quite a rare sight. And then we've got an E-Type Jaguar. Let's have a look under this bonnet. As this, this gentleman just gasped looking under the bonnet, so it must be. It is special because it's a V12. One, I thought it was a one liter. <laughs> So yeah, you get, you get masses of economy out of these engines. Smalls per gallon. Yeah, absolutely. 
But just look at it. That is some. It's got some slight body kit going on there, I think. But look, just look at those wheels. They are immense. Thank you. What an absolutely glorious colour. I'd love to hear this. Hopefully we'll hear this later on. Yeah. I bet it sounds... Uh, we're not getting the Battle of Britain Memorial flight, so we're not going to get the Merlin sound, but we might get a Jaguar V12 sound. Well, I've had this for 50 years. Yeah. And uh, it's got the original 3.8. All the mechanics are original, but it was built for hill climbing. Right. And I built it in the early 70s. And... Uh, Total enjoyment ever since. I bet. Are you, got, are you taking it to Cop Hill? Next yes, weekend? we're there next week. Up the hill. Um, a bit tempting, isn't it? Yeah, with this, <laughs> I'll keep an ear out for yeah, it, it when I'm there. So, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Nice to speak to you. yeah, you too. So built for hill climbing. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll see it next week at, at the Cop Hill, um, which I'm quite excited about. I didn't go last year, so it's had COVID. Uh, BGT. You know, I think that is Nautilus Blue. That one. Um, And then an MG, this is interesting, looks like a Farina. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a Farina magnet. So badge engineering was, is not a, not a 2000s thing. And that's, that's really nice. I've seen a lot of two-tone cars today and that's, that's very nice. I think Farina was the, the guy who designed a lot of these, uh, with, with that badge engine. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, this would have been an Austin... Uh, Cambridge. Yeah, would have been a... Morris Oxford. Morris, yeah, so they, yeah, real badge engineering. You are on You are on YouTube, by the way, so not live. You don't mind your dulcet tones being on YouTube. That's okay. That's fine. Good info. Another TR, there's a TR3 next to it. Um, and then we're into some more American stuff. So we've got GT500, we've got a very early Mustang. Squeeze in between here, if that's all right. That's got a Cobra engine. Yeah. We've got lots of Mustangs. We've got some, some more modern Mustangs here. Yeah, very popular, very popular car in Britain. That's quite something, isn't it? Look at that. Another one there. The clouds are coming over. It has become delightfully cool. And we've seen we've seen, we've seen these Fords already, so we can work back down here. Now it's, we we do see the, a lot of these the Chilton Hills Rally, but there's, there's a little turnout of Chrysler Crossfires, um, which I quite like. I like these. I think they're nice. I prefer the coupe myself. Um, yeah, there's always a always a good turnout of crossfires at these local shows, which is nice. And then we've got this this rather nice Vauxhall. And I think it's a. I, I get very confused. The name I'll know it when I see the back of it. It is a Cavalier. It's a very early Cavalier. Um, yeah, and these were cars of yeah decent sized cars at one point. And that's very very nice looking indeed. Another Daimler there, we saw one of those a moment ago. Another TVR, seen a few of those today. And then this early um, VW. So we've got a, yeah, it's car, so we've got two carbon gears. It's all right, next, thank you, next to one another. And I don't see many, I know when I was at school, so 20, 20, too many, nearly 30 years ago, one of the lads actually had one of these as a, as a, 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 a first car, so oh, okay. that's uh, that's quite something. Probably more like more like this one here. But they they really are attractive, aren't they? BWs don't they don't make cars like that anymore. Um, another P1800. This is a 14. That's a 34. Right. This is a Type 14. That's a Type. 14. So this this one's a Type 14. This is a Type 14. 14. This is type 34. I'm not sure what age John's is. Oh, 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 that's the uh, the American, yeah, yeah. the Americans firing their guns. Typical yeah. Americans. Yeah, yeah. Must make a noise. They've got to make a noise. Got to be seen and heard. Thank you for the info. Not not cars I know a terrific amount about, but very very attractive. Um, they are blanks. Don't worry. We're not going to get sniped. Um, 
Now this is interesting, it's some kind of Lancia and it's very, very pretty. Uh, don't see many of these around. And then this is a Mercedes Ponton. So there's quite a few pounds sitting there. Look at that car, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I shan't speak, I should just let you take it in because it's a beautiful bit of kit. That is absolutely lovely. The owner's stuff, obviously, we expect people to have a wander around, but it's uh, it is nice when you see an owner next to a car. Another, another Stang and then a Wolseley Hornet. So, for those that don't know, basically a badge engineered Mini, but slightly more than badge engineered because it's got this delightful little boot on the back. So the Riley Elf was, was the similar looking car. But yeah, this is like the, this is like a BMC's luxurious version of the Mini with their with their sort of premium brand before they got Rover. So the Wolseley Hornet, very very nice cars. We've got uh, goodness, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's very big, is what it is. Let's see, it's an Oldsmobile and it's for sale. Twenty grand. There we are. Just look at that. That's a that is a bit of classic American engineering there. And we've come to the we've already done that, that bit of that road there. So we'll have a little wander up here. We've got some more British cars to look at. Another TR7. That's TR8. Actually, that's got the, the V8 in it. Very nice blue TR6. Another MGA in Old English White, absolutely gorgeous. And I do think we're about to get cooled down in a moment. Another he big Healy. Uh, this is an MGYB type. Happy birthday. Another, another Frog Eye Sprite, MGB. GT and then a B, another GT. This one's a V8, here we are. Another another Rover V8 in there. Another GT and a, a B. I haven't seen any MGCs yet. There we are, here's an MGC. Luckily the bonnet's open so I can uh, look at the engine and tell. But yeah, this is why I keep missing it. What I keep missing at these shows is the there you go, the Americans again. Um, so we've got this blister in the bonnet on the uh, MGC, which I always miss and get told off by my viewers for calling it an MGB. <laughs> but this is definitely an MGC, this one. Um, another TR, I think that's just a 7. Yeah, plenty of, or TR5, this is another. This is possibly my favourite. So you've got the, the, uh, the Triumph 6, straight 6 engine but in the, the TR4A shaped body. So it's, uh, I think, definitely my favorite. Uh, I do like the TR6s as well, but the, the five is, the five for me is the one I would I would go for if I had the money. Um, another MGT. And we've got a later midget there with the rubber bumper. Something, something V8 has gone up, off the road, up the road, sounding very nice. Uh, Singer Vogue, don't know much about those. Another Wolseley, and that's the 1500. Um, another TR, and that's that's beautiful as well. And then a, another B on the end. This looks like a Sunbeam Tiger. It is. That's particularly, that's a really attractive car. Nice colour. Nice wheels as well, and a beige leather interior. There we are, Joseph. One for you there, mate. So I've seen that stag already. Let me saw that. That was actually parked up near me, but it's moved. Latest Spitfire, another TR6 in British racing or Brooklyn's green. And this this stag's in this very very bright green. It's a very attractive colour. What's that? Java green, I've been told. Yeah, it was a proper colour. It's lovely. It's really it's really attractive. So. If this had been built in the early 2000s, it would have been a monogram for sure. So, yeah, very, very, very nice to see this. Uh, very, very appealing. Now, look at this. This is 
be lovely. Austin A40. And that's a gorgeous little thing. Another Daimler. This is a... I think it's a, we call it a 420, don't we? We call it something else. I'm pretty certain. Sovereigns. We call it a Daimler Sovereign, but it's very similar to the Jaguar 420G. And it really is getting quite dark here. So we might have to do a, a bolt for the... Uh, bolt for the car. Now, these I, I love. Daimler SP250 Dart. Uh, fiberglass construction, I believe, um, to sort of save weight. Yeah, I think Old English White is definitely the colour for these. And it's, uh, yeah, just look at that dash. Red, red, leathery dash. That is, that's absolutely joyful. That is so nice. Let's see if we can get a side on view. These cars really do look good side on. Let's move the gimbal's behaving itself now so I think it's that other does not like my spare GoPro for some reason uh, another Hillman and a little Lotus Elan just uh, tucked on the end here but it doesn't stop we've got more we've got another classic British car here we've got make sure we don't go on the cricket square um, a Jensen 5 for one just look at that that's a that's a big beastie that's that's really very nice and you might be able to see a bit of rain on the lens now which is in some ways good because it has been so hot this week another big Healy 3000 in red um, and Austin Westminster so that was the big the big boy Austin at one point um, standard tents in a few of these this year these are very attractive cars um, there were they were the sort of functional car of the period, but they, they're just so nice. They were, you know, one of the last cars standard built before they got amalgamated into Triumph. That's lovely. Another, another two-tone car. It's de definitely a day for two-tone cars today. And that's a beauty. Um, oh, that wind is lovely. And then we've got another... Another big Brit. I'm just going to pause because someone's ringing me. So we've had a rain break here at uh, Cheersley. It has deterred some people. I don't quite get this. There's a sh rain shower and people just uh, disappear really quickly. Whereas if you leave your car for a bit, it's just gonna, gonna dry out. So you're probably getting more, more wet grass and stuff on the uh, car by driving it. Anyway, a rant over. Uh, come over to this little area here because we've got a couple of tractors. We've got a, a very old Ferguson. And then this, I know this, this tractor because it belongs to Graham who works with um, the guys at AJF. He's the MOT tester. And this is his lovely Fordson Dextra from 1960, which he's transported, he transports on a trailer. Isn't that lovely? Now, I don't know if this is the one that bobbles up and down on its front wheels, but it's, uh, yeah, really nice, really nice little thing. Only when the tyres are out of shape. Ah, only when the tyres are out of shape, he says. So. 20 quid. <laughs> There we are. So we'll have a wander back into. We'll, we'll finish off this video because uh, we just had a little sit in a couple of pints in a of Marlow beer in James's two one six, which was rather nice. We found a found out the correct use for the uh, what some people call the tea shelf. It's actually the beer shelf. Um, and the owner of that seventy five has left their window. I don't know. They must it must be busy because they haven't. I have not seen the person who owns this car. But anyway. Never mind that. We need to go back to where we just, just tell me which back to where we started the before the rain the came. <coughs> we'll have a look at the bikes, Nick. Hopefully, someone I know has come with their bike. I can't see them. Police here that the uh, the caterums are covered up. So the standard ten has gone. That's where we that's where we got to. But the interceptor is still here, which is good. Now they, this isn't live music, so so this is live music, not a recording. So hopefully we're not going to get into trouble. Copper up. Just look at that. That's a that's a brute of a British car. Absolutely lovely. Very nice indeed. That's the best colour in my opinion for an acceptor. Another sunbeam here. Uh, we've got an Alpine soft top and an Alpine coupe. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure this, this is detachable. I think they did make a detachable roof for these. I'm not sure if this is one. Could be. But that's nice. Both in white. Um, a much brighter white than you'd find in a Rover. Um, a couple of Morgan three wheels. We can't fully appreciate them because they're sort of covered up. Don't blame them. It has been, it was an absolute torrential thunderstorm. Uh, we've got another interceptor here. This one's in sort of a gunmetal grey. Lotus next to it. And that's pretty much it. We've got uh, Aston Martin there. More Aston Martin over here. Thames Valley Police, the people who gave me three points. Alpha 33, Cloverleaf. Okay, nice, and an Alpha Spider next to it. A little Italian section here. Another Alpha, and then we've got, we did have more than this, but some people have gone home, don't blame them. We've got some Fiat 500s. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? So sweet. That one's like, but this one in this one in this kind of a beige yellow is very nice indeed. That's a lovely colour. That's a such a cute little car. Um, a few more bits and bobs to have a look at. Um, this looks very much like a D-type Jag. Is this are they not a Tejero? Well, that is that is a seriously sexy looking big cat. Uh, another Jag there, later Jag, another E-Type, and uh, XK, I don't know if it's R or not, is an XKR, and then an F-Type, I do, again, I think these are very, very attractive vehicles, they're absolutely gorgeous, these are definitely going to be a classic in the future. Uh, just have a quick wander up here, I think, I think, folks, we're pretty much done, other than having a quick whiz past the motorcycles which I won't be able to talk, talk to you about at all because I know nothing about motorbikes as you know this moggy mine looks very nice with its flags and ribbons and we've got a roller over here silver shadow I think another some more Jags so we've got XK and then we've got another E-Type that blue is just that is vibrant that is lovely it has rained, it has cooled things down a bit, but it's still extremely muggy. And now this is a Jaguar, is this a Mark 10 or is it a 420? I have to go and have a look at the back. It's a 420G. Now these are, I do like these, they're just enormous. Great big, great big things, really. Just look at the size of it, it's absolutely superb. And then we've got a minor Woody. Look at that, minor countryman in green. Be that is beautiful. The wood looks absolutely pristine. I imagine there's been some some work gone into this. Um, Rover 10, Rover 12, this one, which is very nice. So one of one of the older Rovers we've seen here today, and that is that is bang on for me. That really is. We've seen this car already. Um, just notice that you can see this earlier. So three three and a half thousand S. Um, but it's a, a helicopter going over the top. I think this is the helicopter ride so that you can pay for if you want. But this is an ex Australia car, so it's been re registered in the UK. That's very nice. And then we've got this lovely lineup of Moggy Miners. So we've got one that's sitting on mini lights on the end there that looks like it's had some modifications, shall we say? And then that one there is definitely, that's definitely not the original wheels. They're quite, they look quite wide. Helicopter circling back round. Um, at least the Americans stopped firing their machine gun at it. Uh, that lilac uh, miner is lovely. We've got a convertible low light, which is there. I just think they look so great at the front. They just, they've got a real characterful face. Um, and then, and that blue, that, that blue is lovely. Um, I'm not sure I've seen that one before. I kind of recognise that one. And then look at this, this purple Cadbury's minor van. That is just superb. 
Yeah, we have got we have got a few gaps now, folks. Because some people have taken their classics home, which uh, is a shame. But that's what people do. So we just wander over here. We have a quick look at the bikes, even though I won't be able to won't be able to talk about them at all because I know nothing. We have got this very interesting uh, trike here. The helicopter is hovering right overhead. It's completely stopped. Now this is very interesting. This is this is like a a boat sitting on a a tricycle chassis by the looks of it. I tell you what, the way the when the weather's going. Yeah. <laughs> Clockwork orange. So a little bit of a nod to the Stanley Kubrick film. Yeah, that's a, to a, a boat, and it's got a proper gear knob, so it's not got some motorcycle change. I don't know if the owner's around of this vehicle, but I uh, don't think so. Either of you guys own this? Shame. Yeah, if I see this again, I will ask. We'll ask it about it. It's a very, very interesting car, and it's uh, fairly local because that's a, Walling, a couple of Wallingford uh, stickers on there. And then we've got helicopters still buzzing around. We've got a little selection of bikes. Look at that new Imperial. That reminds me of the film Lawrence of Arabia. I think of the op opening scene when he's, he's driving a brough superior in that, um, which unfortunately loses control of. But yeah, some real, real nice classic bikes. And the smell in this field is superb. We've opened it up and just stayed. What a great it. show. He's a bloody animal. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. There's a lot of cars. This is a village show. I'll spin you onto me. Hello. Um, village show on the cricket pitch, which makes for a really nice day out. So thanks for watching, folks. Um, this is definitely going to be in the calendar next year because this is a great little show. And I feel kind of, I've done quite a lot of car shows this year, as you know, but this, this is definitely a. Uh, Awaken thing. We've got Cop Hill Climb next weekend, so look out for a video on that. Look out for the new series uh, on my channel of flipping the Rover 75. Um, that's going to be a deep clean coming up very soon. Then we're going to have a joint video with Project, sorry, nearly said Project Energy Smashing Pistons. Uh, when we're going to, we're going to actually have a go at the bodywork. Couple of bits on that need sorting out. So look out for that. Thank you for watching from Cheersley. Uh, I'll see you soon on the next episode like subscribe do 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 you know what to do goodbye